Hey everybody, this is TJR. This is a follow-up video to my recent review of The Who's latest album entitled simply, Who. This video received a tremendous amount of response and I want to first just say thank you. Thank you very much for watching and thank you everybody for your comments. I read every single comment that comes in. I can't always respond to every single one, but I do read every single one and I really do appreciate it very much. Because of the overwhelming reaction, I felt that I should uh, take a moment and just respond to some of those comments and add some thoughts that I overlooked in the initial review. But first, if you like what I'm doing, be sure to click like, click subscribe, and be sure to smash the bell notification icon so you can know when I release new videos. If you'd like to help me make more videos, please consider becoming a patron supporter. Patron supporters get early access to specific videos and get behind the scenes content and exclusive content not available here on the channel. Okay, let's get to it. In my review, I mentioned what a wonderful piece of ear candy I thought the track Got Nothing to Prove was. And I mentioned just how authentically retro it felt, how authentically it felt like something that was recorded back in the early 60s. A number of people commented and told me that in fact it was an early demo. G-U-G-L-H-U-P-F uh, wrote and said, Got Nothing to Prove is a 1966 Townsend demo. This doesn't surprise me. When I was first listening to this track, I thought either Townsend decided to write a song that would be evocative of that time period, or he found an old recording and decided to either re-record it or repurpose that recording and add additional instrumentation to it. Unfortunately, the credits in the enclosed booklet didn't give me a clue one way or the other. Though it is obvious that the Henry Mancini style orchestra was added after the fact. So I'm assuming the rest is Townsend's original performance from 1966. Either way, I still think that this would have been the perfect track to end this album with, since this potentially could be The Who's last album. Something that I forgot to mention in my initial review was the difference between the covers of the Standard and the Deluxe Edition. Magical Mystery Mike wrote, Great review. I didn't realize that Target exclusive really is exclusive. I picked up the Deluxe first, but hated that cover edit so much, I had to get the Standard version. I understand wanting to distinguish the versions, but the real album cover isn't even represented on the Deluxe. Magical Mystery Mike, I couldn't agree with you more. I don't know why they chose to do this. This deluxe edition cover is nothing more than the center portion of the standard edition cover. The standard edition cover is a whole lot better. And I don't think it's that necessary to make this distinction. Most deluxe editions will feature the original cover and just simply have a sticker saying deluxe edition, extra bonus tracks. If I'm not mistaken, when Paul McCartney released Egypt Station, the covers were identical. You knew it was the Deluxe Edition because there was a sticker on the shrink wrap that told you so. Also, the rubber band used to hold the packaging together was green on the Deluxe Edition. I believe it was red on the Standard. The Standard Edition cover is way better and should have been used on the Deluxe Edition. In my original review, I expressed a personal opinion. And once again, I want to stress personal opinion that you really can't call this the who when there's only two original members and the rest are hired guns. Once again, this was a personal opinion and it generated a lot of comments that I want to address. But before I do, I want to just restate my feelings on this. When Keith Moon passed away, he was replaced by drummer Kenny Jones. To the best of my knowledge, Kenny Jones was not a hired gun. He was brought in as a full-fledged member of the band. Even though the sound of the band changed with their final two albums, it was still a band. It was still The Who. When the three remaining members reunited some years later for a reunion tour, officially it was billed as The Who, but Townsend said in interviews that it's three guys who used to be in The Who with a whole bunch of other session players. Basically stating, it's really not The Who anymore, but it's as close as we're gonna get. And when Intwistle passed away, they just brought in another session player to play bass. According to The Who's official website, Zach Starkey, son of Ringo Starr, is on the drums, and John Button is playing bass, but they are both hired guns, 
they are not members of the band. And again, I want to restate, while I don't feel that this is the who, I understand why they have to call it the who. The brand is just too strong. Yes, they could just release it as Daltrey and Townsend, but it wouldn't sell as many copies. It wouldn't sell as many concert tickets. Piotr Markoskowski, and hopefully I've said that right, writes, I think it's okay for them to record new albums and play live as the who. I don't see it as a big lie or anything. Zach Starkey is a hell of a drummer. He's doing a good job during live shows. I know he is not an official member of the band, but still part of it. Though no one will ever replace Keith Moon, that being said, I would like to know what Robert Kinsler thinks about Daltrey slash Townsend still making music as The Who. Pieter, that's a great comment. And I did actually have a conversation with Robert about this. And he said that he agrees with me, that they really shouldn't call it The Who, they should call it Townsend and Daltrey, but at the same time, he also recognizes why they need to call it the who. And it's for the same reasons that I've already mentioned here. But he also added that you have to give Jimmy Page and Robert Plant credit. When they released No Quarter, when they released Walking into Clarksdale, they didn't call it Led Zeppelin. They could have, but they didn't. They called it Page and Plant, even though calling it Led Zeppelin would have sold a ton more CDs. But they chose instead to call it Page and Plant because they knew it wasn't Led Zeppelin. Jim Kyle wrote, I dare say that Pete and Roger are reluctant to incorporate two more fully fledged band members because then they would feel pressure to write, record, and do more concerts to justify having a full four piece band again. They are well into their 70s and no, they won't be doing this much longer. So they are content to make new records, etc., when they feel like it, with no pressure to keep going. I definitely get what you're saying with this. I would agree with you that at their age, I would be reluctant too. But I also think that even at that age, I wouldn't close the door on the possibility that I might come across some great musicians, and together we might have some great chemistry, and that we all might just say, hey, this is a band. Jimmy W. writes, they are barely the Who, but if they want to call themselves the Who, what the heck? The music is solid and sounds like a throwback. I like it a lot. Just a couple of weak tracks. Uh, Jimmy W., yeah, I agree with you. As far as the album is concerned, a few weak tracks, but it's mostly solid. In fact, I think the album is better than we have any right to expect it to be. In my review, I describe the Who's music as oftentimes being a contrasting mix of both youthful rage and sincere introspection, and sometimes within the same song. This also generated a lot of comments. Peepa Smith wrote, youthful rage, they're in their 70s, FFS. I honestly didn't know what FFS meant on the internet, so I went and looked it up. I'd tell you what it means here, but I'd have to drop the F-bomb. Marty75 commented, youthful rage, you're looking at the wrong artist for that. I love the hoop, but they are certainly not youthful. Like them for what they are. Don't expect youthful rage. So I have to kind of admit, it was a poor choice of words on my part to use that term youthful rage. I should have just said rage. But the reason why I chose those words is that for most of the Who's career, for most of their classic tracks, they were young men. And by and large, a lot of young men who were playing rock and roll at that time, tended to have a lot of piss and vinegar in them. And I honestly feel that that piss and vinegar fueled a lot of the songwriting. But the truth of the matter is, is you can feel rage and even youthful rage at any age. I feel intense rage every single day. And I know this probably surprises some of you because a lot of you talk about me and say, hey, I really appreciate how calm and rational and reasoned you are in your videos. And to that, I will say thank you very much. On this channel, I always try to present the best version of myself. But the truth of the matter is, I feel intense rage every single day. The difference is, is that now, as I am older, I have learned how to better channel that rage into more constructive outlets. I will also add that rock and roll, listening to it and especially playing it, allows you to unleash your rage. 
no matter what age you are, and it allows you to release it in a very constructive way. To be honest, I didn't expect Youthful Rage on this album, but I personally felt that I got it uh, on a lot of these tracks, and I was glad to hear it, and I was glad to feel it. Mystery Seeker wrote, Youthful Rage? Time to move out from Dad's basement, methinks. The rocking chair awaits. I'm not really sure quite what to make of that comment, but I will do my best to address it. First of all, as far as my dad's basement is concerned, my father passed away several years ago, and we never had a basement in the house that I grew up in. We did, however, have a rocking chair in the living room, and it was positioned right next to the living room stereo, which did not belong to me. It belonged to my father, but he was kind enough to let me use it to listen to records on, so long as I listened with headphones. I spent many hours in that rocking chair listening to records until I got my own stereo. And I will tell you right now, rocking chairs are the bomb. I wish I could have one right now because I'll share a little secret with you. There is nothing better than sitting on a rocking chair with an acoustic guitar in your hands. Trust me on this. Commenter Robert wrote the following. Hope I die before I get old. Pete was not seen so much about physical age as he was how you think and how you feel. Some people in their 30s are over 80. Regards. Robert, I definitely agree with you. I know people in their 80s who think like they're still in their 30s, and I mean that in the best possible way. I know people in their 30s who are thinking like they're in their 80s, and I mean that in the worst possible way. Now, I personally don't know Pete Townsend, but when I hear that song, I see a young man angry because he feels a lot of what he was told growing up was a bunch of BS, and now he's angry at the world for lying to him. But then that's how I felt as a young man. Townsend has his perspective, but he has written the song using a very universal style of language so that we, the listeners, project our own experience onto the song. And that's a topic I need to explore more of in the future. Thank you for your comment. Finally, we have two comments that I can only classify as WTF. Strat Magic writes, The Who are always about great songs and performances. This review is nonsense. Strat Magic, you're absolutely correct. And I want to add that I strive for nonsense in every single video that I create on this channel, and I hope to continue to do so in the years to come. However, I do want to critique one small portion of your comment. While it is true that The Who were about great performances and great songs, I want to add that it was true of every single band that was worth their salt during this era. The Who, Queen, Led Zeppelin, The Eagles, The Allman Brothers, etc., etc., etc. All these bands were about great songs and great performances. I hate to be the one to break it to you, but your definition is not unique to The Who. Finally, we have a comment from John No, and he writes, I'll form my own opinion rather than have someone else's. John, I hate to break it to you. You cannot have someone's opinion. You cannot have my opinion any more than I can have your opinion. You can only have your own opinion. Now, true, you can adopt someone's opinion because you feel it expresses how you feel about it better than you can express it. True, you can adopt aspects of numerous varying opinions because they better define your own opinion. But at the end of the day, your opinion is your own. Unless, of course, you succumb to tribalism, something that is very common here on the internet, something that I do need to discuss at greater length in a future video. Call me crazy, John, but I think that what you're actually really trying to say is, I will form my own opinion rather than listen to someone else's. Which begs the question, why are you here? One last thing in an interview leading up to the release of this album, Pete Townsend said that he wanted to write songs for Daltrey's newly revived voice. And this is something I forgot to comment on. Townsend's guitar playing is as good as it ever was, but the human voice is a very fragile instrument. 
And over the years, it can diminish. But I have to admit, this is some of the best vocal performance I have heard from Roger Daltrey in some time, and better than on the previous Endless Wire album. Earlier, I mentioned that this might be The Who's last album, and that could very well be true. But there was so much energy and enthusiasm on this album that if I were a betting man, I wouldn't rule out the possibility of yet one more Who album. In fact, I would heartily welcome it. One last thing I want to add. Whenever an artist whose music I enjoy has a long stretch with no musical output and then finally does put out an album, I often find myself going to their back catalog and rediscovering it again. And that's exactly what happened with this album. But then it occurred to me that I have never, ever listened to The Who's very first album in its entirety. Yes, I was familiar with the hit singles My Generation and The Kids Are All Right, but I'd never listened to the album. And I have to admit, experiencing this new album made me want to finally sit down and listen to that album. And after listening to it several times over the last week or so, I've really been thinking that I want to do a video review of that album. Let me know what you think of that. As always, I just want to thank everybody for watching. Thank you for your comments. I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say about this video. Hope you all had a great Christmas and hope you all have a great new year. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.